So let's start from the beginning. I was born in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, of all places, and my parents adopted me right after I was born. And shortly thereafter, we moved up to Michigan, which is where I currently reside. And um, when I was eight, my parents went through a divorce. And before they even told me about it, I knew things weren't quite right. Um, not only that, our neighborhood, which had been pretty close-knit, and a lot of people around my same age, it was absolutely a great place to raise children. Lots of fun, um, and lots of friends there. But there was a spree of divorces, probably five or six, within a period of three or four months, that were all pretty bad. And ours was no exception to that matter. My parents got divorced, um, actually the summer of second grade year. And one of what I thought at the time was one of the most dramatic events or horrible events in my life was the way my parents decided to go through with the divorce. They told me, yeah, we're going to get a divorce. My mom's going to move to Mississippi to be with her old high school sweetheart. And at the age of eight, I could understand it, but it didn't seem real, didn't seem tangible, didn't seem like it would possibly happen, even though I knew it was going to happen. So instead of my mom leaving, she really put a different twist on it. Um, my dad and I were going to go to my grandparents' house, and we left early in the morning, so the last thing I remember was as my mom stood in the in the doorway of the garage as we backed down the driveway. And as a little child, that was a vision that terrorized me for probably two or three years thereafter. Um, absolutely horrible experience to go through. Um, you may ask why I seem so detached from it now. Well, if you continue watching this as I get into dealing with the borderline situation, you will understand why. So at any rate, uh, my mom moves to Mississippi, and of course the court ordered um, full custody to both parents, which meant that on every single school break, I had to spend that at my mom's, whether I wanted to or not, really. Um, and I, for being young and naive, I really wanted to spend that time with her. I didn't know that there was anything wrong or anything out of the ordinary. I looked forward to it. Um, and I'd say that's probably about it, between 8 and 12. My mom had very specific expectations of who she wanted me to be, what she wanted me to do, how she wanted it done. And as an 8-year-old, I didn't see anything wrong with that. You know, you just, you did it. It's what your parents asked. There was absolutely nothing wrong with it. All I knew is that if I didn't do it, things would be really, 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 really bad um, for me and for the rest of the time that I spent there for that trip. So, I became a separate person, and that, I think, is really where my life started to compartmentalize. It was probably around that time that what happened at my mom's pretty much stayed there, what happened in Michigan at home stayed there, and then what happened in school was that they were all separate. They didn't really interact or mingle, and when they did, it was not fun. It was always bad, and so I tried to avoid that as much as possible. But not all was dark and bad during this time. Um, I had an absolutely amazing nanny. Her name was April. And she was just one of the sweetest, best people that I've ever met and really helped me get through it. You may be asking, where was my father in all of this? My father is a high-up executive at a large advertising firm. Um, and that entails a lot of travel and not really being home all the time. So... Would I say before the divorce that I was closer to my mom or my dad? I am pretty sure I was closer to my dad. My mom always told me this, and my dad said the same thing. It's the only thing that has been consistent out of them ever. So I would say, although I don't really remember, um, I, I have almost no memory of having an intact family. Just images and flashes from uh, our last vacation, which was to Hawaii, and I was seven years old, and those are fading at best. So, on with the divorce. Um, uh, April was probably my greatest advocate. What I didn't realize at the time was that any time I wanted something, and my father wasn't willing, my father was always giving 14,000 reasons why we shouldn't or why we couldn't, 
none of them that really made any sense. And so I talked to my mom about it, and she would always agree that, oh, this is a great idea. You know, why don't you do this? But she was never willing to actually sit there and talk on the phone with my father for my own benefit of whatever it might be, whatever it was. It was always instructing me on how to argue the point or get it across with my dad, and I, I didn't think, you know, anything of it. She, I, I believed her at the fact that she simply didn't want to talk to him or deal with him. I didn't put any more stock or thought or energy into it, and it caused a lot of consternation. Um, and for a long time, April backed me up. April really was my only advocate. By the age of 13, my dad had found someone that he was going to marry again, and they made the announcement at my bar mitzvah party. Um, the person he intended to marry I'd only met a handful of times, and she seemed nice enough. And because the relationship with my mom was never anything that, that I really had hoped or expected and wasn't the kind of relationship that I wanted with my mom, I'd been secretly hoping all this time that a step-parent would introduce a, a, a much better dynamic and a much better relationship. Um, but that just simply wasn't to be. Um, because my mom basically threw a huge fit um, when she found out that my dad was getting married again. And she claimed it on, threw it on that they were using my event to announce it, which I was perfectly okay with because both of them were having a lot of friends that they knew there. And it was a good time to make the announcement. It didn't really detract from me from my enjoyment or, or my light, because I was surrounded by my friends who were all excited, and so for the grown-ups to be excited for them to be getting married, it didn't really bother me, and it served a dual purpose, kill two birds with one stone. Um, but my mom made a huge deal out of it. Uh, she really made me feel horrible. Always, uh, she for probably two or three months, every day I would talk to her on the phone, as usual, but for two or three months, she would use these horrible, mean, condescending, dissatisfied tones with me. And it really took a toll on my emotions at the time. It pulled me down into the gutters and, and made me feel like things were worse than they actually were. Because all this time through the divorce, with her constant setting me up to argue with my dad, things made things in Michigan seem much more gloomy than they probably were. Uh, it was constant consternation. And, and I wouldn't say that things were, were great or happy. They weren't. Um, because I longed for the relationship with my mother that I could never have, and I didn't know that I couldn't have it. And I longed for the relationship with my father that I couldn't have because of what she was doing, and simply because he wasn't there um, a lot of the time.